Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Dashboard Fridays. I'm Adam from Squared Up, and today I'm joined by Squared Up's Director of Engineering Services, Tim Wheeler. Hey Tim. Hi, how are you doing? Very good, thanks, very good. Um, in today's episode, we're gonna be talking about Azure DevOps, which is a, a pretty hot plugin for us. Um, so it's good to get some good to get some expert insight into what the plugin does and what all the dashboards show. So Tim, maybe you could start by just telling everyone a little bit about how we use Azure DevOps here at Squared Up. Sure, yeah. I mean, Azure DevOps, we've been using quite heavily for the last couple of years. Um, primarily, we use it for its um, CI, CD capabilities. Um, and we also use the um, work items and test plans out of Azure DevOps. Cool. Okay. Um, we, we sort of sit alongside that. We use other tools like GitHub and, and a, a few other sort of external tools. We don't necessarily use the whole suite, but but we, we, we use it for basically building and deploying this this application, Squared Up Cloud, and also our on-premise products, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So we use GitHub as our main repository and uh, yeah, run everything from there using the, as I said, the CI, CD components of uh, Azure DevOps. Um, and yeah, it's really like, it's the kind of cornerstone of um, how we both build the product and feedback um, the results of our build processes to our engineers. Nice, okay. Uh, well, I've got your, I've got the, the dashboards up on screen at the moment. Um, why don't you start by just walking us through sort of, is, is there anything special about adding the plugin? And then what, what do you get when you've added the plugin for the first time? Sure, yeah, okay. Well, let's um, let's just jump right into adding the plugin. Um, I won't do, the uh, full setup because it will take a couple of minutes. But I mean, there, there is nothing unusual about the setup. You need a name, you need to know your organization name, uh, and you need to have got yourself a personal access token, um, which anyone with those privileges can get out of the product itself, as in out of the Zero DevOps. Um, and if you have more than one organization, then you can just create multiple plugins. Um, so cool. it's pretty straightforward. And, and any user can create a personal access token, right? But but it's specific to say the the projects they can see that kind of stuff. That's right. Yeah, you need like a, the minimum level of permissions to create personal access token, and then you can have a token that gives you as much of the permissions that you have. If that makes sense. Yeah, got it. Cool. And so here's one I made earlier. Um, so this is just what you get out of the box. So it, as I said, it takes a couple of minutes to. Um, to uh, check your permissions and sync everything into the uh, platform. But uh, once that's there, you get this nice overview. Um, you can see from uh, this overview tile that uh, we bring through pretty much every object type that you get in Azure DevOps. So you've got your pipelines, uh, release pipelines, you've got environments, artifact packages, projects, uh, two types of folder, queries, that's for work items, uh, artifact feed, um, deployment groups, yeah, pretty, pretty much uh, Oh, task groups as well. Yeah, pretty much everything you'd, you'd expect. Um, and also out of the box, we give you a couple of um, dummy dashboards so that you can actually get started. I mean, these aren't going to be perfect for any one person, but they're there to give a uh, an idea of the sort of um, tiles you might want to build and what you might want to monitor. Um, so this is kind of a very high level view of your, uh, your, your Azure DevOps world. So you've got projects. If you were using um, DevOps as a repository, then you get your pull requests there, uh, you know, artifact packages, task groups, deployment groups, um, and so on. Um, we also give you a pipelines overview because uh, maybe we're a little biased because we use it so heavily for CI, CD, but this is a nice way to uh, get started with looking at the pipelines that you're running and the results of them. Um, so for instance, you've got failures on your main branch. So these are builds that are occurring to main. Um, you've got count of total runs and you've got a nice health block there showing the results. So these would typically be your, your pass fail or maybe maybe canceled or on hold uh, pipelines. Um, and then, yeah, some other metrics that you might track might be useful. Uh, again, all depending on your use of Azure DevOps. Um, so and Go on, on Adam. I was just going to say, so, so the, these just the, these work out of the box, right? They'll, they'll, they'll always show your data from Azure DevOps. It's not like sample or anything. It's going to be real data. But you may um, you may find that they're, they're not necessarily the most useful dashboards in the world, but they should get you started, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've made a few assumptions. I'm just going to give you one 
one click. And yeah, as you say, I haven't touched these at all. These work out of the box and they're connecting to our organization. This is our live data. Um, so as an example, if we just look at the, the build failures. Um, we have taken the data stream build failures and we've put in this filtering of refs heads main, which is probably common for quite a lot of people, but you might have master, you might have any like product name in there. You might be calling that squat platform, something like that. Um, so you would just need to edit this to whatever your path is. And then, hey, presto, you're looking at uh, build failures for your particular pipeline that uh, you care about. Nice. OK. Um, obviously, if people can build dashboards in, in Azure DevOps. What's the, what, what's the big perk for, for doing it in Squared Up? Yeah, good question. Um, I think there's a number of things. I mean, one, it's kind of clear from the um, the look and feel of the Azure DevOps uh, dashboard section that you know it's not designed as a dashboarding tool. That's that's not their strength. That's not what they're there for. It doesn't, quite frankly, look as good. Like straight out of the box, it's not engaging. Um, you're also limited in um, your ability to select exactly the components of Azure DevOps you want to look at. So combining between two projects isn't possible. Um, being able to look at a specific pipeline and then a specific something else on top of that pipeline, um, you can't do that. Um, your graphing is quite limited. Um, and also, I don't think there's any concept of monitoring. So uh, we haven't touched on that yet, but you know, you can very quickly use our dashboards to set up monitoring and get notifications, which is yeah, a very nice feature, well, especially in my role. You know, I like to know exactly what's going on um, but without having to go to the low level all the time. So yeah, it's a real benefit. So does this dashboard already sort of scope to say like all the projects we found or at least the sort of multiple projects that we found that this is already sort of doing more than you can in Azure DevOps? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if anything, this is doing too much. And when you've installed this out of the box, you're then going to tailor it to your needs. You know, maybe there's maybe you want to clone this dashboard and you're going to have three of these to look at different projects or different groups of projects, maybe different groups of folders, depending how you structure your, uh, your organization. Nice. Oh, well, uh, on that note, then, have you got some dashboards, some real dashboards that we use at Squared Up uh, that, you, that you could share just to inspire the audience to build their own? Of course, you know I do. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's look at um, what we actually use for the platform. So this is uh, the Squared Up uh, platform dashboard that we use pretty much every day, I would say. Um, you'll recognize a few of those tiles. I mean, that's some of the inspiration for our out-of-the-box dashboards. Um, and kind of, you know, top corner, most important thing to me is these are failures in the build pipeline when we're trying to do a new release to production. So very handily, there's been one failure, so I can show off what it looks like. Um, so yeah, just really quick way of getting to any issue like, okay, there's been one issue, I can see it there, I can then see the um, the ID of the pipeline. Um, if I scroll down, I've got a full table, I can then get, you know, the details out of um, those pipelines and see which stage has failed. And I can use the hyperlink to drill straight into Azure DevOps, which is, you know, always a really nice feature, I think, of Squared Up is just being able to drill straight back down to the application to see the error in detail, because yeah, when you're resolving it, most likely, you're going to want to get right down to the bottom. Um, other than that, yeah, we we track, we monitor the, the average build time. Um, you know, there's going to be fluctuations, as you can see from our branch, you know, it's uh, got, what, 1,200 seconds sort of range. Um, but yeah, it's, again, nice to be able to monitor that so that if something suddenly doesn't fail, but is maybe stuck on hold or... Um, or if something's just long running, then we'll get an alert for that. Um, we can also look at uh, the most common build stages. I mean, maybe we don't react to that on a daily basis, um, but we can see that if we get errors out of publishing test results, like the most, um, and all the lights have gone off in my room. <laughs> oh, never mind. We'll carry on. Um, and agent usage and job queues. So again, just kind of looking for that efficiency of your pipelines. You know, do you have really large queues? Um, are you using a lot of agents? Are you using a lot of agents at one particular time? You know, what, why is that spiking? 
so yeah, we use this dashboard both for you know being able to quickly react and resolve issues, um, but also being able to like monitor long term and look at um, sort of efficiencies in areas that we can improve on. Um, and if I just switch over, so yeah, we we talked about the fact this is a failure, so we get a nice red icon to warn us of that. And then means the dashboard is red, so I see that there. Um, and at the top level, we have an overview dashboard. So again, I can see that actually at the moment, that dashboard is the only one that I need to worry about because I have the similar things set up on three other dashboards um, and they're all showing green, which is nice. Um, and again, at this level, we've got a couple of other tiles where we're just rolling up um, the cost that we're spending um, specifically for those uh, DevOps components. Um, and again, we've got agent usage here because typically you're looking at your users usage across your whole organization. That's not something that you configure at the uh, specific project level. Um, so yeah, that's a real whistle stop tour of some of the ways that we're using um, uh, the Azure DevOps plugin in Squared Up. Nice. So e even though there is that benefit of, you know, putting the, you know, say like the average build time across everything in all your projects, there are always going to be cases where you want those specific monitors per project. We probably care differently if a build fails when we're building our on-premise product versus pushing live into our SaaS product. So again, having, having different dashboards for different projects is still valid, even though you can consolidate it all. Yeah, exactly that. I mean, we, we've got the uh, dashboard server product has its own um, dashboard here. And, you know, it's, it's a very different look. Uh, and again, we're not, we're not putting the build failures kind of front and center uh, in terms of monitoring because we release roughly every three months for that. So therefore, a failure in a pipeline on any one day is not a reflection of what we're putting into production. Um, and yeah, so with that, we care much more about things like job queues and build durations because that's how we're impacting our engineers and maybe there are things that we should be doing, uh, whether it's increasing agents or whether it's uh, finding those those failures that are causing them to rerun builds. Um, and that that's the more important piece of work for this particular uh, set of pipelines. Nice. Okay. Um, okay. One more question from me. So th there's clearly a lot oh. of like, out-of-box data streams where you can just pick your scope, pick a data stream. Are there any configurable data streams for the Azure DevOps plugin? Can you, is there anything you might ever want to build yourself or extend? Yeah, in fact, actually we, um, we did a little, uh, little sneak preview here. So where were we? Yeah. Okay. So if we look at that, this is our master branch for the squared up platform where we have got these, um, stages. Obviously, these these stages um, will will be completely different for everyone who sets up their pipeline. And so, when we when we build the data stream, we're able to pick the stages that we uh, that we want to display and show those and get those results. Um, I mean, here we've got the text, but you can also uh, configure these so that you can show the state uh, nice. for those stages. Um, and that you know that can be a nice uh, pipeline. It all depends what level you want to go to. Uh, and also, if you were building something, if you're, say, using boards, work items a lot more in Azure DevOps, we don't use it ourselves um, very heavily, but uh, we have the, the work item query language as well. So you can write a data stream that will pull back um, any work item that you use, whether that's for a use case or a test case or um, maybe a, 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 like a theme depending how you're using boards, um, you can write custom queries directly into Squared Up and pull that data in. Um, and again, you'll be able to use any of our visualizations um, to represent um, the statuses that are available. Nice. Okay, so getting back all the, say like, open work items, grouping them by the who they're assigned to or their current priority, all that kind of stuff, pretty easy stuff. Yeah, exactly. Like maybe you're using um, like a, a release date across them or something like that and you want to see like your progress to that yep you can you can pull back all of those nice okay well i very much appreciate your your time i'll go ahead and go ahead and wrap us up i'm sure that's enough to get people inspired to try it out like i said it is already a, a pretty hot plugin so hopefully this video will, will get a few more people trying it out get a few more and um, a few more users generate a bit of feedback and um, if you do have that feedback you can go to our community platform community.squaredup.com 
bunch of experts always talking about um, our products and monitoring and data in general. So, so head over there. And if you want to get this, um, you want to see the, the, da the dashboard, you want to read a bit more about it, probably some links to some associated blogs as well, you can head to squaredup.com slash dashboard gallery. Uh, but yeah, that's it for today. So thank you very much, Tim. Appreciate your time. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm sure, we'll see you again sometime in this series. Um, but yeah, that's it from us. Um, so yeah, thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Okay, cheers. Bye. Bye.